Hey everyone, it's Flak Fire. Today I'm talking about some of the information from Battlefield 1's closed alpha dug up by data miners Lobex 300, Spitart 14, and the creatively named Sorry EA Dice. That information is up on Reddit. Specifically, I'm covering all the new details revealed about Battlefield 1's multiplayer and some implications from a historical perspective. I am not a participant in the game's alpha, and a big thanks to Jack Frags for allowing me to use his footage. Obviously, spoilers may follow, and the information gleaned from the alpha may be inaccurate or may not reflect what's present in the final game. If you missed my video on the single-player campaign, be sure to check it out after this one. First, let's talk weapons. A trove of weapon information was found in the alpha. I've combined the information from both leaks and categorized the weapons by type. For submachine guns, there are references in the alpha to the Beretta 1918 and the MP18, and we've seen both of these guns. There's another submachine gun mentioned, however, and that is the Stanschütze Hellriegel 1915. We know DICE is taking some historical liberties with available weaponry, so I'm surprised these are the only submachine guns found in the files. Others were in development at the time, like a variation of the Show Show as a submachine gun, the Villa Perosa, Beretta OVP, and the Thompson Annihilator prototype. For semi-automatic rifles, we have the Shea Rigotti, the Winchester Model 1907, the Mondragon, the Remington Model 8, the Luger rifle in an artillery configuration, and the Mauser C96. The Shea Rigotti never saw combat in World War I, and it's possible the Mauser C96 and Luger will be featured as both a pistol and as a semi-automatic carbine. For lever and bolt-action rifles, there are references in the Alpha Files to the Martini Henry, the Springfield M1903, the Lee Enfield Mark III SMLE, the Mauser Gewehr 98, the Mannlicher M1895, and the Winchester M1895. For light machine guns, we see references to the Bergman MP15NA, the Madsen, the Hotchkiss M1909 Benet Merci, the Lewis gun, and of course, the Browning automatic rifle. The obvious absence of the Show Show light machine gun is intriguing here. DICE has said the French will have a multiplayer expansion dedicated to them, so of course that's when I would expect the Show Show to make an appearance in Battlefield 1's multiplayer. There are references to several shotguns in the Alpha Files, including the Pump Action Remington Model 10 and the Winchester Model 1897. There is also mention of the Browning Auto 5, which was a semi-automatic shotgun. For pistols, there are a lot of pistols mentioned in the files for the Alpha. They include the Webley Bulldog Revolver, the Frommer Stop, the FN Model 1903, Colt Pocket Hammerless, Mauser 1914, the Calibri, the Borchardt C93, the Mars Automatic Pistol, the Steyr M1912, the Beretta Model 1915, the Luger P08, the Mauser C96, Colt 1911, Lancaster Pistol, the Webley Fosbury Revolver, the Smith & Wesson Model 3 Revolver, and the Bodeo Model 1889 Revolver. And again, the sheer number of pistols here is honestly surprising. Hopefully this indicates there are a lot of other primary weapons that had not yet been implemented by the start of Battlefield 1's Alpha. Aside from the absence of standard French weapons, there is also an absence of Russian weapons, yet in the game, the Winchester Model 1895 is specifically called the Russian 1895. There's nothing to indicate we'll see the Eastern Front in the Battlefield 1 campaign, but the inclusion of Russian weapons might mean that they will be featured in a DLC down the road, like the French. There's also a few anti-tank weapons mentioned in the Alpha Files. There is the Vickers QF gun, which we know as the rocket gun, the Mauser 1918 T Gewehr, and K bullets are also mentioned for the Scout class, which were steel core armor piercing rounds designed to be fired from a standard Mauser rifle. Other new information included quite a few weapon attachments. There was reference to a bayonet, compensator, though it's limited to submachine guns, flash hider, heavy barrel, hexagonal barrel, narrow choke, spread choke, and silencer. Those are all obviously barrel modifications. For the underbarrel, there's mention of a bipod, foregrip, palm rest, and trench magazine. And then for visual modifications, we're able to see in the files the mention of a butt pad, cheek riser, C-stock, monopod, and recoil plate. It's unclear in most cases if these can be applied to all weapons or are limited to some, 
Of course, these attachments likely alter your weapon's behavior. There are several melee weapon options, including the hatchet, knife, saber, shovel, bayonet, mace, and trench club, and there's also new information about the game's gadgets. Anti-tank mines are listed as equipment for the assault class, while rifle grenades are present for medics, which I think is an interesting decision. There's a mortar and tripwire bomb for the support class and the aforementioned K-bullet for the scout. Scouts also have access to a flare gun which marks enemies on the map, similar to the MAV in Battlefield 4. Customization also appears to be a big focus in Battlefield 1. The same data indicates we'll be able to choose our multiplayer character's face from 11 different skins, and there are many potential camouflage designs for weapons and vehicles. New vehicle details emerged as well. There are references to a lot of naval assets in multiplayer, including boats, destroyers, battleships, transports, and get this, even submarines. This could mean the inclusion of a naval superiority game mode, though no mention of that is found in the files. Either way, submarines in Battlefield would be pretty cool from a gameplay perspective. There may also be Battlefield or Hero type pickups in Battlefield 1. We've yet to see any gameplay with the flamethrower, but there are files referring to flame troopers, meaning you might find the weapon on the battlefield. Data miners also uncovered some details about a few of Battlefield 1's multiplayer map names, 10 of them in total. Some of the maps obviously reference actual World War I battles that may be included in the campaign, so possible spoilers. There is Amiens, which is probably based on the Hundred Days Offensive in 1918. There's also maps Chateau and Desert, and then Foul Fortress, which is probably based on the Foul Landing back in 1915. There is another map called Forest. Similarly, there is one called Argonne, which is probably based on the Muse Argonne Offensive in 1918. Another map is named Italian Coast in the Alpha Files. This is probably the announced Empire's Edge map, which likely takes place in the Adriatic Campaign. There is another map called Mountain Fort, which is probably the announced Monte Grappa map. This is likely based on the Battle of Vittorio Veneto, in 1918. Another map is called Scar, which is most likely the closed Alphas map, the St. Quentin Scar, based on Operation Michael in 1918, and then Suez, which is probably based on the raid on the Suez Canal in 1915. So lots of stuff for you guys to look up on Wikipedia there in regards to history, but all of these maps have serious implications for Battlefield 1's single-player campaign, as many multiplayer maps are inspired or copied from single-player chapters. Data miners also found several game modes listed in the leak. We've got Rush, Conquest, Team Deathmatch, so all standard game modes there. There is another one called Breakthrough, which is likely the new and massive operations mode. Other game modes include Domination, Possession, one called Behemoth, and then as I predicted, Air Superiority looks to be available for Battlefield 1 right off the bat. Interestingly, there is no mention of a hardcore game mode, though that will likely be added by launch. So, what do you make of all of this information on Battlefield 1's multiplayer mode? Does any of it have you concerned, or are you excited? Tell me in the comments. As I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in Battlefield 1's single-player campaign, check out the video that follows, where I take a look at what all the information from the Alpha means for the single-player experience. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.